نحمده و نصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما الله صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وصحبه وبارك وسلم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رحمة للعالمين وعلى آلك وصحبك يا شفيع المذنبين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته O praise due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, cherisher, sustainer, nourisher of the universe, and shows his blessings and salutations upon his beloved Rasul, Zuri Purnur, Hazrat Ahmed Mushtaba, Muhammad Mustafa, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah, thum alhamdulillah, it was so beautiful to listen to the Qasida, the Nasheed, sung by um, the Honorable Al Marhum Haji. Abdullah Rawut, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, Abdullah Jafar, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevate his status in general for those. Why I said Rawut? Because the shop was called Rawut, no? am I right? Yes. The shop was called Rawut. So when I was a small child, I used to get confused. I said, why is the shop name Rawut when the surname is Jafar? Yeah. So anyway, so. Okay, so Al Marhum Haji Abdullah Jafar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevate his status in general to what does. It is so beautiful to listen to his dissertations. I mean, many of us have uh, his old cassettes. And um, he even read, you know, the Ashir Pitarana in the presence of Bakshullah Baba Ashrafi and the various Qasai. Adam Nai was just telling me now that this recording took place um, in a mahfil at Central Stores, I think, at, uh, during the visit of Bakshullah Baba Ashrafi and uh, Al-Marhum Haji Abdul Qadir Bray was in fact sitting next to um, Haji Abdullah Jafar while he was singing this Qasida. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevate his status also in Jannah to Firdaus and his maqam. In Jannah to Firdaus and all those who were in the Mahfil, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who are marhum, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them, grant them a higher rank in Jannah to Firdaus. Inshallah, ameen thumma ameen. We have a lot of memories of marhum Haji Abdullah Jafar, especially when it comes to the galleries. I remember him sitting as a small child, I remember him sitting in the middle in the middle of the, the daira. The da you know, we call the daira the duff that we hit, but the daira is actually the circle. So, you know, we say, is the daira tomorrow? <laughs> so we mean that this is the duff, it actually means, is there the circle tomorrow, the daira, in which we're going to hit the duff and make the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I remember when I was younger, Haji, Saab, uh, Haji Abdullah Jafar used to be sitting in the middle with the doll with the red cover, the dark red cover, and he used to hit the doll, and that doll had moving nice bass. <laughs> yeah. That doll had beautiful bass, and I think he was the only one who used to hit the doll at that time. Now, alhamdulillah, we've got Hafiz Mubin, we've got Modali, and oh, Janab, Janab also. Oh, I think you report for to Salibai. <laughs> Rashad also, a smile. Everybody is the door nowadays, alhamdulillah. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. You know, this is something that makes me very happy, alhamdulillah. You know, for the past few nights at the garage, I'm sitting on the chair now, so I've got a better view of everybody. You know? <laughs> so, so, so when I sit and then, then, you know, alhamdulillah, most of the dhikrs we know by heart, so, so my eyes cast over the mahfil, and I especially look at our youngsters. I look at our youth, and what makes me very happy, alhamdulillah, is they are engrossed in the recitation of the Gary Sharif. They are involved in the recitation. If you, you know, in the past, you know, they used to say after the mahfil, hey, the mahfil was hot, you know, the Gary was garam. But now, every night the Gary is garam. Every night the mahfil is hot because everybody is reciting. Nobody is sitting quietly when they're coming in. They're taking the books, everybody's taking the books, and they're following from the books. Youngsters at Ashimai's gallery, some youngsters asked me for the electronic copy of the gallery Sharif because if they should come in late and there are no more books available, and then they can follow it on the cell phones, alhamdulillah. You know, so everybody is really involved in the gallery. I would, I would like to say Mubarak to everybody. Mubarak to uh, Mullah Saab who's here every night first. Eh? Before Maghrib, alhamdulillah, may Allah bless you and reward you abundantly, inshallah, for your, for your qurbani. And your, I would say it's a jihad. Eh? 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and all those who come early, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them, reward them all, inshallah. And us that come late, may Allah reward us more. <laughs> so, but I want to say Mubarak to everybody on the beautiful Garu Sharif that we're having this year after a hiatus of two years during COVID. We didn't get together, and you can feel every night the Mahfil is garam now. And I would like to say Jazakallah and Mubarak, especially to our youth who are regularly at the Garu Sharif and who are reciting so beautifully. Um, and, and, and I think there's more understanding and more, there's more appreciation for the Gyarvi nowadays, Alhamdulillah. We did some explanations a few years ago about the different segments of the Gyarvi Sharif and how we can um, absorb, understand and allow the Gyarvi Sharif to inspire us to greater levels. So today, inshallah, I'd like to continue with this, but more on, you know, we, 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 we heard the Qasira now of Marhum Haji Abdullah Zafar, so today we speak about the door a little bit. You know, we'll speak about the death and the diary, inshallah. So, alhamdulillah, first, what we need to, I think if we want to start somewhere, we must start with Hazrat Sayyid Sheikh Ahmed Kabir Rifai, radiallahu ta'ala, the great wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, buried in Basra. Inshallah, may Allah grant us the opportunity to go to Basra. There's a lot of many awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Basra. Khaja Habib Ajimi is also there, Imam Hassan Basri, many of the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are in Basra. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take us there for ziyarat. This was a great wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Hassani Sayyid, Husayni Sayyid. Sayyid on his father's side, Sayyid on his mother's side. And he was also the cousin of Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani. So he, he was a contemporary of Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani. He lived in the same time period of Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani, but afterwards when Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani passed away, his muhabba for Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani was so great, and his jalal was so great, that Sayyid Ahmed Kabir Rifai said that anybody who visits Iraq and does not go to the mazar of Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani, he will not be welcomed by Allah. And he will not be welcomed by us too. Who? The, 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 the galaxy of the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That was his reverence for his cousin, his, uh, uh, Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani. And Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani radiallahu ta'ala an, also had great love for Hazrat Sayyid Ahmed Kabir Rifai. One day, somebody came to Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani and asked him, Hazrat, please explain to me, what is love? So, um, Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani Hal Spark said to him, if you want to know what is love, go to my cousin. Sultan al-Awliya, radiallahu ta'ala an, he sends this murid to his cousin, Hazrat Sayyid Ahmed Kabir Rifai, go ask him what is love, and convey my salams to him first. Allah Akbar. So he travels to Basra from Baghdad, he travels to Basra, and he finds Hazrat Sayyid Ahmed Kabir Rifai, radiallahu ta'ala an, he respectfully conveys the salams of Ghusl Azam Dastagir, Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani Qaddas Allah Shil Aziz, and he says, Huzur, I ask this question, to Ghassal Azam Dastagir, what is love? But Ghassal said that I must come to you and ask you what is love. So as it said, Ahmed Kabir Rifai, he stands up and he says, love is fire. Love is fire. And he repeats this and he begins the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he starts whirling. He starts spinning. He starts whirling. He goes into a state of ruts. And then he goes into a state of wajj and he whirls and he whirls and he ascends into the skies and he disappears from the ice. Allah Akbar. There are many incidents, I'm going to continue with this, but there are many incidents in the life of Sayyid Ahmed Kabir Rifai where he, where he ascends into the sama, where he is in a deep state of wajj. What is wajj? Spiritual ecstasy. When you lose yourself completely in the dhikr and in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this man is standing here and he says, wow, this guy was spinning and he disappeared from my eyes. I said, where is he gone to? And in the state of confusion, he's looking around me, what do I do now? I just came here for, to ask a question and I wanted an answer. And now, said Ahmed Kabir Rifai has disappeared. What do I do? And he's wondering this and he sees the physical or the spiritual presence of Ghassul Azam just again. Ghassul Azam appears before him and it's easy for the awliya Allah to do something like this because whatever they do, they do by the powers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If the wali Allah, if Ghassul Park takes his chappal and he throws it in the sky and it lands on somebody's head miles and miles away who's robbing the caravan, he does that through the power of Allah because Allah becomes his hands through which he holds. 
But he did not throw, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throws. And when Qawswaq hears the call of somebody in distress, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَكُنْتُ سَمْعَوْ الَّذِي يَسْمَعُ بِهَا I become his ears through which he hears. So he hears through the qudrat, through the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he appears in spiritual form in front of his murid, and he tells his murid, take some rose water. Allah Akbar. Take some rose water and sprinkle rose water on the exact spot where Sayyid Ahmad Kabir Rifai was spinning, where he was whirling, Sp spread some rose water there. He takes some rose water, he sprinkles it there, and after a few moments, Sayyid Ahmad Kabir Rifai, he arrives again, he appears again, Allahu Akbar. So then, now he's absolutely amazed at this incident. Now he goes back to Shaykh Abdul Qadir Zilani radiallahu ta'ala, and Shaykh, Shaykh asks him, so did you find out what is love? <laughs> did you get your, 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 your uh, explanation of love? So he says, yes, Huzur, I understood what is love by the one single act of Sayyid Ahmad Kabir Rifai, who was spinning and disappearing from my eyesight, because I realized he ascended, he probably ascended into the bargah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He probably ascended into the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Ghaus al-Azam the Sagir said, that my dear cousin is a great wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he has reached such a status, he has reached such a station and a maqam that very few of the awliya of Allah will reach that maqam. That's Sayyid Ahmad Kabir Rifai. And this ratib that we do, the ratibul, uh, the ratibul Rifai, that's the one that we do. And this ratib comes from Sayyid Ahmad Kabir Rifai radiallahu ta'ala So now when we speak about the whirling and the raqs and the state of wajd of Sayyid Ahmad Kabir Rifai, we go to the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. An Anas radiallahu ta'ala an, inna al-habasha yasfanuna bayna yaday Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa yarqasun. Sayyidina Anas radiallahu ta'ala an, who says that the Abyssinians, they were there by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Habashis, they came all by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they were displaying their art in front of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa yarqasun. And they were making raqs. They were making raqs, rux, which is a type of spiritual swaying, spiritual dancing even that you can call it. وَيَقُولُونَ مُحَمَّدٌ عَبْدٌ صَالِحٌ And they were saying that Muhammad is a pious servant of Allah. Muhammad is a righteous servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Huzur sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because of the accent, Rasulullah couldn't understand. Then the Prophet ﷺ asked the Sahaba, مَا يَقُولُونَ What are they saying? قَالُوا يَقُولُونَ مُحَمَّدٌ عَبْدٌ صَالِحٌ The Sahaba replied, Ya Rasulullah, they are singing your praises. They are in the state of raqs, Ya Rasulullah, and they are singing your praises. Okay, now that is another point from the lifetime of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, where people made raqs in the presence of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, if you look at our Yaru Sharif, when we make the dhikr of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, when we remember Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, and we involve ourselves in the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We, we allow ourselves to be absorbed and captured by the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What first happens to us is the dhikr is like, like a hammer. It is something which shapes the heart. Okay? You know, when we, the, the awliya have advised us that we must move the head. And with the chin, you hit the heart. It's a darb. That is what is called a darb. So a darb is a hit. So you hit the heart like a hammer to shape the heart into submission of the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to hit the vice out of the heart. This is number one. Because when you, when you submit to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then automatically with that, the vice will inshallah disappear. So you are shaping your heart to the submission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we do, we do those type of actions. In the Ashrafi tariqah, we follow the tariqah of um, Sayyid Maghdoom, Ashraf Jahan Sinani, when he used to um, plow the fields and we follow his action. When he, used to make, when he used to plow the field, he used to make the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All right, la ilaha illallah, and he used to raise the, 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 the plowing. Okay, so this is what 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 the awliya Allah used to do. So we imitate the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa taala. We follow the awliya Allah, and when they advise us to do that with our head, this is what we do with our head. But when you lose yourself in the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa taala, then all these motions come naturally to you. 
<coughs> these motions should come naturally to you and you will see yourself you will feel you will feel your entire existence starting with your ruh and then your soul losing yourself in the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all right but that is number one that is how the the, 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 the dhikr shapes then with, it's accompanied with the movements and the movement is not a movement that is forced by you but as I said it is a natural movement and then when you go a step further you enter a state of raqs not yet wajd you enter a state of raqs where the body automatically begins begins to sway the body automatically begins to sway without any effort and what we are simulating when we are hitting the daira when we are standing and hitting the death and going around in the circle we are simulating the, 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 the act of raqs we are unfortunately not making actual raqs we are actually not losing ourselves because I feel we are holding ourselves back many of us hold ourselves back because of, of shyness you know, we hold ourselves because we go share, but honey means to say, you know, if I must get hard here now, I'm oh, going to say the watch, what is people going to say? They're going to make fun of me or things like that. This is what we feel. But when we allow this to happen to us, it is a very beautiful experience. It is a very beautiful experience. And this is what the wording of Sayyid Ahmed Kabir Rifai was all about. Incro involved and engrossed in the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to such an extent it took him into a state of raqs and from there it took him into a state of wajd and that is why he disappeared from the sight of the murid of Rasul Azam Dastagir now when you are in that state and when you are enjoying the dhikr at that point and it is then accompanied by the rhythmic beating of the death and the rhythmic beating of the door, then that takes you to another level. This is why the death was hit in the time of the Prophet ﷺ. This is why you will find in many of the 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 the, 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 the mahfils of the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there was always the rhythmic beating of the dumb because that helps to uh, um, advance your state of concentration that helps to advance your state of losing yourself in the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so what I'm saying is that alhamdulillah we are reciting our Gyaru Sharif very beautifully but when it comes to the hitting of the of the death our zikrs that we recite alhamdulillah are so beautiful they are so beautiful zikrs just give me one kitab please uh, the, the, the dhikrs that we recite are, are, are so beautiful and if even if we do not understand the dhikrs that we are reciting alhamdulillah there is so much sawab in it for us I mean we start off with with uh, with Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina we are reciting durood upon Rasulullah we are speaking about fi hubbi Sayyidina Muhammad we are speaking about our love for Rasulullah we are speaking about our, our um, uh, um, asking for the shafa'at arujul shafa'at min Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we are speaking about how Rasulullah is our saviour malja wa manja wa Muhammad on the day of Qiyamah all these things we are discussing and we are we are singing about in the um, in the, in the adhkar so if we involve ourselves more in these adhkar and if we appreciate these adhkar more alhamdulillah it will take us to a different level I, I promise you you will be able you will feel it especially when we have the daf and the doll you will feel the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you will enjoy it more we, you, we observe sometimes the mullah sahabs will be standing in the middle and those who are going in the daira and hitting the daira they are not always participating participate Whatever you know, whether it is the chorus, whether it is even what we are reciting in the middle, participate in whatever you can participate. These are the teachings of the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What did Sayyid Mahdum Ashraf Jahangi Sinani radiallahu ta'ala anhu say? He says that remember anything that you are taught by the pious servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you can't remember it, write it down. And if you don't have time to write it down, just remember who told you that. Just remember who told you that because remembering their name is also a form of barakah for you. So, so this is why we must, we should participate because this is what we've been taught by the pious servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and you know, the, the, most of these dhikrs, alhamdulillah, they are in the Urdu language and there's so much benefit for us in it. We come to Mary Ghaz, Muhyiddin Karaj, hey, Sabraj, me, Maharaj, who, who's the boss? Eh? Sultan al-Awliya. Rasul Azam Dastagir, Shaka Ali Maqam, 
بغداد ہے رضی اللہ تعالیٰ جب سما پر رسول کو بلایا کریم عرش کے ساہے میں تم رہے شاہدین تم نے کان دہا نبی کو دیئے تھے یقین تب سے دل مصطفیٰ کا شادہ It tells the story of Mi'araj al-Nabi صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed Sayyidina Rasul Azam رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ to be there at the time of the Mi'araj of Rasulullah and we when Rasulullah صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم wanted to ascend the Burak and then Rasul Azam put his his kan dahi put his shoulder forward he put his shoulder forward and Rasulullah صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم said to me said to him that you give me your shoulder all of them will give their necks to you all the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give their necks to you that ya Mustafa tum ko boli hai janu jigar qadam tum hara hai kul awliya ke upar this is what Rasulullah صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم told Shaykh Abdul Qadir Zirani so we are relating a hadith here we are relating incidents from the life of the Prophet صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم we are telling beautiful stories here Shaykh San'an need to hate till me like you know the story of Shaykh San'an Allah Akbar Shaykh Shaykh San'an's story is so beautiful this great wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala great great wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when وصل عزم السجير رضي الله تعالى عنه وني ميدا أنعس من قدمي هذا على رقبة كل ولي الله that my foot is on the neck of all the أولياء of Allah all of them accepted. خوس باك said I mean خوز معين الدين said بل على رأسي وعيني is on my head is on my eyes. بابا فريد الدين جنجي شكر he said it's on my pupils even it is even on my pupils. خوز جنيد بغدادي he was on the member. Now, Junaid Baghdadi came before Rasul Azam the Sagir. He was before Shaykh Mutal Jinani. But because that Qadami Hada ala Raqabati Kulli Waliyi Allah comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all the awliya who came before Rasul Azam the Sagir, they were allowed to hear it. He heard it on a Friday when he was standing on the member. And he heard it and he didn't respond. And he came down the member after his khutbah and Allah asked him, do you disagree? Do you have a problem? Oh, Junaid? What's the problem? Junaid Bhagdad says, Ya Allah, I accept. I accept that the foot of Ghosul Azam Dastagir, who is yet to come, is on my neck. So all the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept. Khwaja Hazrat Sheikh San'an, he was also thousands of miles, hundreds of miles away from Ghosul Azam Dastagir. He heard the call and he probably underestimated the greatness of Ghosul Azam the Sagir or he overestimated his own greatness and he says no Abdul Qadir your, your foot is not on my neck all right and Ghosul Azam the Sagir heard him Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani heard him Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani saw him as well he could see him and he heard him Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani said ala raqabatihi rijlul khinzir that on his neck will be the leg of a pig. That was the, 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 the bad dua Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani made that on his neck will be the leg of a pig. And it such happened, so happened that Sheikh San'an was traveling with, with, with I think 400 of his muridin. They were traveling for Hajj. And on the journey, he saw this Christian girl. He fell in love with this Christian girl. He was absolutely crazy about this Christian girl. He should stand there and wait for her just to get a, a glimpse of her. And finally, one day when she took notice of him and she asked him, what is your problem? You're such an old sheikh. Why are you standing and stalking me here? And he said that I'm in love with you and I will do anything for you. And what did she get? She got him to leave his deen. He had to renounce. She told him, renounce your faith. Drink this alcohol. All this she told him. And then he said, I want to marry you. And she said, okay, if you want to marry me, you must come to my farm. And when you come to my farm, you must work on my farm for one year. And where must you year we work? In the big sty. Wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was on such a high level. All right, great. Gnostic, Gnostic wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on such a high level because he didn't accept the statement of Rasul Azam to say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dropped him to that level we had to clean the pig sty, and then there was one small piglet that couldn't walk. He used to pick it up and put it on his neck. 
He used to carry that one over his neck. There is the effect of the dua of Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jalal. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, let us not... Uh, um, what's I'm looking for? We must value our Iman. We must value, we must appreciate that we have Iman. We have La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that we perform salah, we are Sunnis, alhamdulillah, we read the kalima. Our aqidah is accordance with the aqidah of the Ahl al-Sunnah wa jamaah. We must value this and we must appreciate this. Because it is only by the grace and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At any time, just like that, by the snap of the finger, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can take us from there and drop us right down there. And we must always make this dua that when, our, when we reach our khatima, may our khatima be on la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from shaitan at that time. Um, the ending of Sheikh Sana's story. I'm not done yet. <laughs> Thank you, Gopal. <laughs> So, the Muridin of Sheikh Sa'an, they were disgusted in him. 398 left, two stayed behind, two special Murids stayed behind. They said, no, we must, we must do something about this. And when they saw that now this year has almost passed, and for a year he was working amongst the pigs, and now it was time for him to make nikah to this woman. And he was proceeding to the church with a bowl of pork in the one hand and a glass of wine in the other hand. They said, we need to call out to Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani. And they turned, they faced Baghdad and they said, Ya Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani al-Madad. Ya Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani Shaykh Look at what is happening to Sheikh Sun'an. And that time, Rahmah. And mercy came into the heart of Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani. And there was a transference of hilm, wisdom. There was a transference of nur and a transference of hidayat from Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani in Baghdad all the way to, into the heart of Sheikh Sun'an. And he immediately dropped whatever he was holding. He went into sajda and he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgiveness. Allah Akbar. So he came right through the nazare karam of Rasul Azam Dastagir. And then he turns away, he goes to his murid and he said, take me immediately to Baghdad. And they traveled to Baghdad. And when they came to Baghdad, he tells his murids, cover my face with mud. Cover my face with black mud, tie my hands, and take me like a prisoner into the bargah of Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani. Take me like that, because I am a sinner in his bargah. So bind me, tie me up, and blacken my face with mud, and take me like that to Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani. And that is what they did. That's how they took him to Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani, Qadir Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Aziz. And he said, he came for, before he could ask forgiveness from Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani, Huzur stood up, and in the dirty state that he was, Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani embraced him. Allah Akbar. Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani embraced him, Pirto, yeah. It was the Nazare Karam of Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani. And Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani blessed him with the wilayat of 40 awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was always a great wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But after this incident, Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani made him even a greater wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mu'jiza yitira anwar hai. This is the anwar. Of Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani. He uses the word mu'ajiza here. Why? Because every karamat of a wali is in fact the mu'ajiza of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So this was the mu'ajiza of Rasulullah and the anwar of Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani. So this is the type of adhkar that we read in this book. So time is up. There's, there's, there's so much about um, Sheikh uh, Ahmed Kabir Bifai in here. There's about the Panjitan Park and the such. Subhanallah. You know, now when the majalis is finished, I make a request to our Mullah Sabti, you know, let us do more of this adhkar when we do the daira, inshallah. You know, there's many that we have forgotten. A few nights ago we read one that everybody don't know. So let's read, let's read, make a point of reading more of these adhkar that we can learn, inshallah. And um, let us enjoy this adhkar, let us enjoy these dhikrs. You know, everybody has gathered. This is what I did many, many years ago. I'm going to tell you a trick, okay? It's not actually a trick, but when the book comes to your house, make a photoset copy of it, okay? Because we all have gadgets. Comes to your house, make a photoset copy. And especially these adhkar that you don't know, make your own book and learn these adhkar. And when you go to the gadgets, 
you know what the mullah subs are reciting and you know the chorus that you're also supposed to recite and you know when when i was younger and we used to come to the last one i say tata na ya pa tata na ya pa i just think but is ya panjata ya panjata i opened the book i saw ya panjata i said why do we say tata na ya pa tata na ya pa i said what is tata na ya pa Oh, Jatanaya Pan, all these funny things we used to say. Now you, you read it, you've got your own copies, and you, you understand. You say, oh, we're singing about the Panjatan Park. We're singing about the family of Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and we're singing their praises. And that's where you enjoy it more, you get absorbed more in the, in the, in the Adhikar, and, um, and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will grant us greater reward. And that is what we want. I mean, we don't, we don't want this to become a ritual. We want to come here. I mean, it's 24 nights of gallery. It used to be 30, 31. At the start of every gallery, every month when the Rabbi Thani starts, and then when I get dressed, and then I say, Ya Allah, grant me strips. <laughs> you know, it's 24 nights in that night gallery. You know? So we, we, we ask Allah, but it's good work. And what, we, what do we discover? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us that strength. Because we're coming for good work. We come because of our connection with Rasul Azam, our connection and our love for the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it shouldn't just be a ritual because Muhammad Ali Jaffa invited, I must go to his place, otherwise next week he's not going to come to my gallery. No, it shouldn't be for that. It should be for the love of the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we come here, we lose ourselves in the adhkar. We lose ourselves in the adhkar. We enjoy the adhkar and we go home spiritually rejuvenated. Not just with heartburn after eating all the savouries but with spiritual rejuvenation inshallah so may Allah SWT bless us and reward us all and grant us the and grant us the um, hidayat and tawfiq and, and allow this insti- this beautiful institution of the Gyaru Sharif and the Ratib to continue for generations and generations to come inshallah amin thumma amin wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh